We are Fandom Roulette. Two nerds with a passion for history, video games, tabletop games, and, well, really any nerdy stuff that comes into our lives. While we might not be able to name every ship classification in Star Wars, or every Pokemon, or every spell in the player's handbook, well, one of us can. We're still here to have a good time. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Fan Roulette. This is Joe. And I'm Cody. And on Fan Roulette, this is a podcast where we talk about a myriad of nerdy things. So many nerdy things, including such things as history, video games, tabletop role-playing games, and whatever nerdy stuff we feel like talking about as it comes up in their conversations and uh, in kind of in general. So, how are you doing, Cody? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm also doing well. You know, as well as well can be. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially during these... Uh, yeah. these times sure yeah so um yeah uh, you up to you up to anything uh any, up to anything new in the world uh the world in which you live yeah uh i am watching a show uh-huh. that we will talk about in this episode so i won't Whoa. i won't go i won't get too much into it yeah sure, usually yeah, i don't yeah. do this but today <laughs> i am Ooh. The, the intrigue it's building so now people have i know to so save, save that for your last one so they have to listen to the whole thing um yeah i w- maybe <laughs> okay I'll, sure. hopefully i hopefully i won't forget <laughs> fair enough um don't worry what about I'll, you I'll... what what uh what what oh. new nerdy things have you been up to since the social isolation uh event oh yeah um i've been reading comic books yeah, uh, and uh, I've been watching. I've been watching things, um, you know, things to uh, to to cheer cheer me up. Um, yes, you know it's it's funny like when when this whole concept was was kind of a novelty, and people were like, "Oh, we're gonna watch! I'm gonna watch so many movies that I've never watched before." And then like you know, I scroll through Netflix. And I'm like, "Oh my god, there's so many movies that I love that." just kind of make me happy and i don't know if i want to throw on something that's like an unknown that might make me sad um but yeah um yeah (laughs) no i totally get that like we i know for me i i'll sit there and like oh i have a little bit of free time I'll, i'll watch like an episode of something and then like i'll just scroll through netflix for like 30 minutes And then go back to something that's familiar because I'm just so like, not only is it like decision overload and I'm like, there's just so much, but then also like that, the, the fear of the unknown, like what if the show sucks and I just wasted an hour or whatever. You're putting a fair amount of expenditure in, in something that could potentially not be, um, the most, uh, the, the, yeah, you know. You yeah. know what I'm saying, Cody. I know what you're saying. You're saying words that mean things. Also, can I just say, yeah, um, with all of, with all this with all this stuff, I'm I'm glad to see that there are like still funny things that are coming out of it. Like I saw one, which was like, ladies, it's time to start thinking about if the guy you're dating has post apocalyptic warlord potential. Ooh, you know. Yeah. I haven't been thinking about that uh, recently, so can can I say I do not? Um, oh yeah, I'm I probably at if if there was a scaling system from zero to Mad Max, I am at best like a point five. Did I, ever, did I ever tell you about my? I think I have my Mad Max parody movie. I think I told you about this last time. If I'm being honest with you, Mad Max parody movie. Yeah. No, uh, last time we talked about the your Thanos show. Oh, that's right. That's another good funny idea I had. Yeah, that is a good. Uh, but but tell me about your Mad Max show. Okay, so okay, so here's so here's how it starts, right? Okay, is you start off with like a Mad Max like style chase, right? Like maybe you start okay. like with like a weird old lizard in like the middle of a desert, and it like skitters off as like three gigantic cars, and there's like flames and dudes on spikes and all of that shit, and then it's following the action. And then the car zoom out of frame and you see like a normal looking guy. Like I'm, I'm imagining like a Sean, Sean, or I'm sorry, a Simon Pegg type, like the Sean of the dead guy. Yeah. yeah, And he's in like a nice suit 
And the basic premise of the movie is that, like, the rest of the world figured out their shit except for Australia. And only Australia <laughs> became Mad Max. And he's, like, uh, like you know, like, a New World government representative sent to Australia to see if, like, he can help. And I haven't decided which is funnier yet is if, like, he, like, you know, quote, unquote, goes native or if he... um. Or if he's, like, desperately trying. But I just have this image of just, like, this nebbish, like, bookish UN representative, like, just trying to navigate the world of Mad Max. Um, And just, like, every episode almost dying. Yeah, right? Like, and then, you know, like, and so that's the thing, right? It's, like, I feel like over time, like, he, he gets... He gets and so yeah, like like the joke in like an early episode would be like, no, we must fight for the gasoline. It's like, oh, your your car still used gasoline, that's that's crazy. Like we developed like X green energy like ten years ago, we completely removed the need for gasoline. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So yeah, that was that's like an idea for like a a a Mad Max parody. Tm 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 tm. Right 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 right. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to take it. If you take it, then I will pull out this episode, and yeah. I will now, and I will now desperately do my best to not, um, you know, uh, like co- infringe any copyright, so I can, so we can play this in its entirety <laughs> in the courtroom. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is gonna be like kind of a, it's kind of gonna be like a weird one. Yeah, this, is, uh, this would be our pop culture media grab bag episode. We've yeah, done these before. G- this, this is going to be our of... grab bag episode. This is when we usually like choose a thing to like talk about. So, you know, the past couple of weeks we've been talking about The Witcher. Um, yeah. And all the coin tossing therein. Yeah. Um, we also talked a little bit about The Mandalorian. A little bit about Mando, yeah. We definitely yeah. talked about... Uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe f- yeah. for a couple of cool episodes. Oh uh, yeah, quite quite a lot. Um, and I, I really yeah. liked those episodes. They were a lot of fun. Um, but this one is going to be um. So yeah, like I said, it's gonna be kind of a weird one. Um, it might be kind of an obvious one, maybe in some regards. But we sure. want to talk. We want to use this episode to um give you some of our suggestions for like things to things that you can consume over this like next stretch of time no matter how long or short it might be um so cody can i can i start real quick with something absolutely fantastic um so um a lot of these a lot of these services that we're going to be talking a lot of the things we're going to be talking about are going to be available on your like streaming services so like netflix hulu disney plus um amazon prime i'm sure there are others and i'm forgetting um and like yeah we understand that like hey it might not be possible to like get all of these streaming services because there are a lot of them and you know those those costs set up over time a little bit um but uh something that's kind of cool real quick uh check i would i would say check your local libraries uh, because a lot of libraries have some things on them that can kind of help with this problem. Um, so I'm going to just throw out two of them. Um, there is one called Hoopla. So that's H-O-O-P-L-A. Hoopla is um, a, a sort of it's a downloadable service uh, where you can get access to quite a lot of comic books. You can get access to books, audiobooks albums some television shows some movies things like that uh the thing with hoopla is that you only get like i think it's like 10 downloads a month or something like that so it's not an unlimited thing but it does give you access to um i will say quite an impressive um selection of comic books that's how i've been doing the majority of my comic book reading uh and then the other one is an organ uh, a, a a thing through your through certain libraries. So once again, just check your personal like library system called Canopy with a K, so K A N O P Y. This gives you um 30,000 plus streaming videos including documentaries, film fest favorites, classics and the great courses. Um so even if you're not necessarily able to like get every single streaming service, um 
or or you know any of the streaming services those are just two options that give you um a, a fair amount of of content once again canopy only really has like 10 downloads a month as well but if nothing else there's uh some some pretty cool free resources out there thanks to certain libraries so check your local library system and who knows maybe they have something we don't have access to in uh in in our neck of the woods so that's my little elevator pitch uh libraries they're pretty cool yeah i mean yeah it's I, totally understandable uh yeah especially cause, yeah like because everything has to have its own streaming service now it's kind of becoming the new cable situation so like i totally sure. get it so like you know if, yeah. you, if you need to find an alternative source that's uh a little more uh financially accessible uh definitely check out uh those sources those are those are really good options and i'm glad you brought them up because like knowing my fucking dumbass, i was i would have forgotten and you know sure uh yeah i wanted to get those uh, out at the top uh yeah just because like i said i've been using i've been using hoopla to read comic books um and so uh yeah shall we shall we kind of bounce back and forth talk about some of our different things yeah Uh, i can i can start off do it with now this might come as a surprise to to anyone who who knows me okay okay uh i want to recommend a little show called star trek the next generation what jess is binging that right now heck yeah it's awesome yeah she she um, i've i've watched a couple of episodes now um i would say i am a trekkie now that's great i'm very yeah. excited uh, i've um, watched i i think in total four episodes but there. i would argue that i've watched the most important one which okay. is where uh, Picard mud wrestles a relative of his in a vineyard. Can I? And, <laughs> yes. And that I feel like for me, that is what I needed in life is. Uh, <laughs> that is so can I can I say like yeah. that episode is so weird. Well, the whole. It's, OK, it's that, so can we beautiful. say that like that whole show is like lots of like bizarre happenings that are like telling very you un- like very real and very unique stories but like sure. it's all in the very weird like space naval academy media yeah yeah so i'll I'll say like um the the thing the thing about this show the reason that i'm i'm so i i i recommend it and and really like what i would say is i would say like if you watch a couple episodes next gen and you're not feeling it like maybe bounce over to the original series or Deep Space Nine or maybe like try to find one of the movies or something. Um, but I think what it boils down to it, like it's 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 the kind of future that you want to live in. Um, oh, it has me super hopeful for the future. Like, of yeah. course, whenever I sit down, I have to ask my wife, like, all right, wh- how how does all this work? I don't understand what just happened. And so she she explained the general premise. And it definitely, in my very limited knowledge, it has me hopeful that maybe one day we'll get to Star Trek levels of, like, human coexistence where, like, you know, we kind of shed all of these, you know, shitty qualities yeah. quote unquote that we sometimes have based yeah. on you know prejudices and, like, and whatever at the end of the day like it's it's a bunch of like very smart happy optimistic people who are like working to and they're not always happy that's the thing too but it's, it's people who are like working together and at the very least they're like listening to one another and um you know trying their best to everyone pushing forward in like a good and meaningful way um and and yeah i think it's one of those things where it's one of those deals where i watched it all the way through i watched every episode of it and now it's kind of reached the point where it's like there are some that i'll just kind of like throw on if i want to like cheer myself up a little bit Um, yeah i'll i'll admit the first season has its rough patches um, okay but when you when you get to like seasons like three four and five i will i will say there's probably some episodes in there that are like some of the like all-time greatest episodes of television ever made so um i feel confident saying that so so yeah you got, you, do you got one for me yeah i wasn't you know i'll be honest with you for a second <laughs> i was like 
Wait, is is he done? Is he? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's like, my turn. I feel like just quick like elevator pitches. Yeah. For like, um, why do we? Why was? Why did this thing make your list? So the so the obvious one, if you haven't yet, and you're looking for something that's got gritty fantasy, can I Heck direct yeah. you to the Netflix Witcher series? You should toss a coin to it. Yeah, uh, it is a gritty fantasy show where. Uh, you know gritty fantasy stuff happens no um it's about a person named Geralt of Rivia and he is a uh he is a witcher which is basically this like super magic source like sorcerer created like person who is just kind of uniquely stronger than the average human as to stave off like monsters and kind of like a folklore fantasy era where like right outside your town is a monster and they'll come and get you if you're not careful. So he goes around and like slays monsters, but like there's other shit going on. And like, I did, I couldn't get into, um, shit. What's it called? Game of Thrones. Yes. I watched the first season and just couldn't get into it. Um, and I know a lot of people like, we're speculating whether or not this would be, uh, is which you're going to be the game of Thrones killer. And I'm like, no, but if you're looking for something to fill that void in your heart, because I know a lot of people were really upset with the ending of game of Thrones, uh, yeah. Witcher is really good. And it kind of has that same vibe going on. So if you're looking for something that's gritty fantasy, look no further. I don't know how many times I can say gritty fantasy before it like becomes gritty. Embedded. Yeah, gr- yeah. Gritty Ugh. fantasy. Yeah. <sighs> it's also just like really it's like it's it's well shot. The the actors really put a lot like you can tell they put a lot of like like heart and soul into their roles. Sure. Like yeah. nothing felt half assed. It, it's it's good. Yeah. Oh, I will also say um I'm pretty sure because of like weird things about Star Trek that it's available on any streaming service. Um it is available on Netflix on, for sure. It's on Netflix. I'm pretty sure it's available on on Amazon Prime and I'm pretty sure it's available on Hulu because I watched a documentary about this and apparently that this show was like sold on this like super weird system where it was like sold originally in syndication so like no one company owns the rights to it um weird yeah like i don't think anyone thought it was gonna be anything and so like they developed sure. this like, brand i could be wrong but i remember seeing this in a documentary like they they developed this like brand new like distribution system where i was like all right so it's basically going to already be in syndication and if anyone wants to buy it up and like air it go ahead and like yeah it's kind of a weird thing. Okay. Um. Okay. So the next one, the my, my next suggestion is Letter Kenny. Um, Ooh, Letter Kenny. I, oh yeah. Go ahead. I I was gonna say I know the name, but I don't know if I know the show. Yeah. So Letter Kenny. Uh, you if you have Hulu, you've probably seen the ad on their front page because they love to advertise it. Um. So I will I will say this um, similar to Star Trek in a weird way. Um, I like did not like the first episode of the show at all. I I almost actively hated it. But for whatever reason, like I just didn't stop that that like countdown. Um, and I had the first two seasons done in like three days, something like that. And they're short nice. seasons. They're like only like six or seven episodes a piece. Um, it is a, it's, it's one of those deals where, do you ever watch the show Archer? Archer? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I like to say about Archer is like, I couldn't tell if it was the smartest dumb show I've ever watched or the dumbest smart show I've ever watched. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I would put Letterkenny in like a very similar ilk to that. Um, it is, okay. it is a story of, or it is a show about a small town of uh a small town in ottawa canada and there are sort of like three major factions which is uh you have the hicks the skids who are like drug addicts and the uh jocks the hockey players um and it's one of those things where it's it's kind of dumb but like 
the the writing is really snappy and it's really smart and it's really funny um so like for instance like they'll they'll just kind of they'll kind of banter off of one another really well and they they have some really um heartwarming moments they have some really funny moments it's just it's one of those shows that's just populated to the gill with weird characters and one of the things about it is like it's this just kind of nice world where like everyone is accepted in 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 a roundabout way with the exception of dgens from upcountry um and and like the one the one joke that the one episode like has this joke where there's there's nothing more degen than being home homesmophobics um and so it's just like this group of like very good intentioned hillbillies uh or or they call themselves they call themselves hicks this is a group of very well-intentioned country guys who are trying their best to be you know supportive and 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 good-hearted and good neighbors and it's a fun little show. It's kind of weird. Sometimes it takes a minute to get into. Anytime the hockey players are on screen, I'm laughing mainly for the the cadence of it all because they're saying lots of hockey terminology that I just have no idea what it means. Uh, but it's a weird show. But it's one of those shows that, like, if I'm if I'm in a mood, I'll turn to it, and it will probably cheer me up within a couple episodes. So nice. Yeah. But yeah, that is that is that one is on Hulu. Nice. Uh, the one that I'm going to suggest is also on Hulu, if memory oh, yeah. serves. Uh, it's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Heck it's, yeah. It's a comedy show uh, with Adam Sandberg and a, a bunch of really talented, hilarious uh, actors um, about being a police officer in Brooklyn, New York. And the, the main character is this kind of... Um, kind of like wanted to be like an action hero and uh-huh. saw pol- like police work and the police academy and all that as like that out and then kind of realized that that's not how things work <laughs> sure. and so like he he's very um he's a very unique individual let's put it that way but it's super funny and uh as soon as we start as soon as jess and i started watching it we couldn't put it down uh and it, it i believe has a new season it's either the new season's already out or it's on its yeah. way out i think it's happening to right be now d- like in real time yeah to be determined but it's super good and super funny and if you have hulu i recommend it yeah um, along the same lines, um, I will, I will, um, recommend two other shows from Mike Sure. The one, chances are, a lot of people have probably already watched, which is Parks and Rec. Um, good show. Yeah. And then the other one is The Good Place, which is his kind of high concept show about, like, morality and the afterlife. Um, and it is a very funny, but also very dense, like show about like philosophy and, and trying to be a better person in this world and things like that. Um, and then I'll, I'll say this. So like these, all these, those three shows are all pretty heavily created by a guy named Mike Schur. Um, Mike Schur, I've like, like read things by him and I've listened to things by him and thing that I've seen like a through line in all of his work is that like. The world we live in can be kind of like weird and and scary and demoralizing and stuff. But like if you find the right people, if you find the right people to back you up, we can like navigate these systems together. Um, So at its core, it's like the people it's the people it's the people that you choose. It's the people that you work with that uh, that make the world better, Um, which is a good which is a good thing. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those are those shows are both on Netflix. I think that's the only place you can find them. So, yeah, nice. Okay. Um. So I had two that were Jess's pick, which I okay. also, I oh, also yeah. approve. Um. But uh, she had two shows. Uh. Both on Netflix. Uh. Travelers, okay. which is a sci-fi show about basically time travelers it's super good it's super uh um modern i guess i don't know how to describe it uh it's it's 
it is a unique take on time traveling and what people would do with time traveling if given the opportunity. Huh. Um, yeah. I don't want to say too much because I think it's better to go into that show knowing very little about it other than like the fact that it's sci-fi. And so you have some of those kinds of like, oh, okay, you got to suspend your disbelief a little bit because like okay. time travel is not actually like a thing that we are aware of yet. So How like, dare you? I'm right. How dare you, sir? And then, uh, similar, uh, not similar in vain, but similar in like, you, you probably shouldn't know a whole lot going into it is Russian doll, which, Ooh, uh, yeah. is on Netflix. Um, it's a very interesting show. And I would spoil the premise, but I think finding out finding out what that is is part of the fun of that show. But it's uh, it kind of revolves around this woman who lives a very interesting life, um, and uh, it gets progressively stranger and stranger. I haven't finished it myself. Uh, but I'm looking forward to doing that with uh, this a little bit of extra time that I have. It's a little sure. dark, so probably uh, yeah. I should preface that. Um, it's not quite, uh, it is not The Good Place or like, a comedy. Sure. Uh, you, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. you probably should go into it with that mindset. But otherwise, it's super good. I recommend it. Awesome. Uh, and then, okay, so the next one I want to talk about, um, and then maybe like, yeah, it was, uh, is a is like a at this point called... I'm gonna go oh, go on. Oh, it's called Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. Um, huh, I've never heard of that before. You just said magic words. So yeah, so this is a Netflix original. Um, okay, and it is from DreamWorks uh, Animation, which is like just uh, routinely been crushing it. Um, okay, in my mind. okay. Uh, and so the basic premise is that um, Kipo is a young girl who um is is she lives in a bunker city because the surface world has been overrun by um like mutant animals uh and she gets separated from her people uh so she's searching to find them and so she teams up with uh, a little girl named wolf who has been raised by wolves um and then two con artists one of whom is a bug um and they're just trying to navigate the world and it's one of those deals where it's like so they meet um like a a group of lumberjack cats called the lumber the timber cats uh they meet a group of like punk or like hard rock snakes that are led by Joan Jett um what else they there's like oh there's a a group of wolves that uh, are astronomers that are led by John Hodgman and one of the members of the Wu-Tang clan um it's a it's a it's a really colorful vibrant show and it's another one of these shows where it's like um kipo's biggest strength is that she's like a really good person and so um yeah she's just kind of full of she's cool full of excitement enthusiasm and vim and vigor and it's just this idea of yeah like hey trying to form bonds might be better than like fighting a person or or trying to you know harm them in some way and so it's a it's a fun little show uh season one is out knowing netflix's animation model there'll probably be a new season like in two weeks time for whatever (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but yeah it's a it's a good show it's a weird show you could probably watch it pretty quick um and it's a lot of fun uh so yeah nice um so before i get to that last show the coup de gras of this i wanted to bring up some if you play video games and you're looking for stuff to play um i recommend uh witcher 3 heck yeah uh it is so many hours of content uh including the dlc which are basically their own standalone like 20 30 hour experiences like i have put so much time into the witcher 3 on my first playthrough and i'm going through again with like the dlc in mind and uh this this game it's a you know it's an action rpg where you play a witcher and if you've been following along similar to the netflix title um in fact I actually just got to a part where they make references to stuff that happened in the first season of 
The Witcher. So yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, th- that was like a like a cute moment where I was like, oh yeah, I literally just watched that like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, so super fun. Uh, it's it honestly, it's my it's in my top five. Um, but awesome. It's got a lot of like play time to it. So like, if you're looking for something to really draw out your sure. time, I recommend get, it. Um, deep. If you're looking for something chill in a very kind of chaotic time, I know this, uh, you know, this time is kind of a little scary for everybody, uh, you know. Uh, I would recommend uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons that's coming out uh, this Friday, which dates this episode. We've never done that before. Um, it It's basically a slice of life style game where you basically just go around and you interact with other animals that are just kind of like there to hang out and you basically complete like you go fishing and you you craft things and basically it's just this like it's you do whatever you want to do in that moment there are things like there are a lot of like creative outlets and lots of like little fun things to do and collect but ultimately it's your game use it how you need it yeah and then just another really good game with another good one coming out that's following right in its curtails is Resident Evil 2, the remake. Um, game super scary, super fun, lots of action. And then Resident Evil 3 is coming out in April. So like, you know, if you get if you if you play through the second one now and like can can, uh, you know, purchase Resident Evil 3 remake. Oh, it looks that those games yeah. are so gorgeous. And I'm just I'm like shocked at how good they look on like the playstation 4 like i know there are like really good looking games on those systems but like every time i see it being played it's like holy shit like that's a whole new game but yeah those are some recommendations if you've if you haven't played them well one of them you definitely haven't played them yet (laughs) but uh if you haven't played witcher 3 or resident evil 2 remake i would recommend them they're really fun yeah, and if I could do two quick uh, comic book recommendations. Yeah. Comics comics books. Um, So once again, you can get the majority of this on Hoopla. I would highly recommend the Jason Aaron run on the comic Thor. Uh, Jason Aaron's one of my f- personal favorite comic book authors working right now. Uh, and his run on Thor is nothing short of epic. It started in 2012. Um, Jason Aaron was also the one who, the guy who pioneered and really pushed hard and really uh, did write the um, idea of of um, the female Thor. Um, okay, that was that was his big idea going going with it. Um, Jason Aaron wrapped it up last year and it was really cool and it was a really satisfying ending. So it's one of those deals where it's like, you know, picking a. I w- I would I would compare it to like watching a television show. Like in my mind. It, it it ended very satisfyingly, so don't worry about picking up a book without uh with with anticipating a like bad ending. It had a really good one. Then the other one, there's only one trade of this out right now, right now, but it's a cool comic called Bitter Roots, um, which is about a family of monster hunters living in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. Um and so they come from a long line of monster hunters from uh Africa. And they are now fighting monsters in New York City. So um, it's a it's a cool group of a lot of really fun, unique personalities. Um, highly recommended. And then you said you had one more show. Okay. So yeah, let's do here's it. Here's the thing. I lied to you. There's okay. two. <laughs> um, oh no. I okay. So it, it hit me while we were recording, and I feel like such a fool for not bringing it up earlier. However, if you are looking for a shonen anime, may I direct you towards My Hero Academia? It is, uh, I think it's on season four? Three or four. And it's going right now, and I don't get me wrong, like, I know that, like, if you are familiar with anime... And, like, he's like, oh, another fucking shonen anime. Like, yeah, I get it. Like, if if you if you are out, like, if you're burnt on shonen anime, like, uh, nothing I could recommend to you would even make sense unless you've already watched and or read it. But 
it is the story of a uh a young boy in a world filled with superheroes and superpowers that they call quirks and he wants to become a superhero but does not have said powers and it's his basically his uh growing to the top of the superhero gig once uh he figures out how to combat the fact that he is quirkless Mm. spoilers he does eventually get a quirk but it's what? complicated i, I know in right a, in an animes yeah in an anime so yeah uh so there's that but my 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 last one the one that uh recently came out uh within the past year or it's been a year now um but it a, a dark show it's on netflix it's called Al- altered carbon Okay. I really liked the first season. Um, there are some minor complaints I have, but like overall, that story and that world that they're creating in Altered Carbon is super fucking good. And uh, the second season so far has also been stellar. I haven't finished it, but I do recommend if you're looking for like a dark uh, cyberpunk style show. Uh, I would I would go there. It's good. At least the first season so far. I can't say anything yet about the second season because it hasn't or I haven't finished it yet. So who knows if like the ending kind of. Who knows? I, I have heard that the second season only gets better. Um, hey, guys. Um, So real quick, um, what what I think would be really cool uh, would be um, if you if you watch anything we suggested, um please please let us know um we'll be giving you the details for that in a minute or also um why don't we come up with a hashtag fandom binge and then uh tweet it at us uh with the hashtag fandom binge about shows that you're binging or shows that you think should be binged or things like that why don't we all help out one another build the community up a little bit and let's give one another things to to think about talk about read um watch etc so yeah um, that'd be really cool i'd love to hear what fandom. people are watching exactly or if you watch something that we recommended and you want to give us your thoughts on it once again you know use hashtag fandom binge or there's probably lots of other ways that you can get a hold of us isn't that right cody absolutely so for starters if you're here and this is your first time welcome this hey. is the uh, fandom roulette podcast and if you want if you are looking for podcast content and you and you need a lot like a lot we'll look no further if you go to our website at www.fandomroulette.com we have all of our episodes we are on episode 90 but recently split up into multi uh we have more than 90 episodes of content and uh varying in uh length and stuff so if you want to listen to all of our stuff you can go to our website uh on there you can find our episode list you can find our bios where you can learn a little more about us but if you go to the bottom there's a little area where you can send us basic basically like fan mail without the email attached to it like if you want to tell us about the shows that you've been binging or shows that you recommend us starting to watch we would love to hear from uh the audience and our fans to you know introduce us to cool new stuff i know half the things that i suggested were things that other people suggested to me so uh yeah feel free to reach out to us there and if you want to get at us on our social media platforms like for instance for the uh hashtag fandom binge you can do so uh, by finding us on Twitter at fandom r underscore podcast. That is our Twitter handle. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram under fandom roulette. And um, if you're looking for, you know, our various mediums uh, for, you know, however, however you want to watch the podcast, you can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google play, your RSS uh, podcast catchers. Uh, we're also on YouTube. So if you're, uh, if you're a YouTube junkie like myself, uh, we are also there. So uh, again, we appreciate every, every, everyone who's listening and uh, interacting with us. We love doing this and uh, anything uh, from shares to like to subscribing, smashing the bell if you're on YouTube, 
uh, all that's all those little things help us and uh, we appreciate everything that uh, you do yeah what, what he said um so yeah uh so wrapping wrapping up here um once again thank you so much for listening we do this for you guys it's great um we love having you and uh signing off for fan and roulette this is joe and i'm cody and as always stay nerdy stay super nerdy